Hello and welcome to GrooveMe.com. This is Mark and today we're going to take a look at something interesting. Uh, as you can see behind me, right around now anyway, there's some interesting little cameras. They're very small actually. We're going to be looking at do, 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 do. Uh, well in this case this is Lomographies um, 200 ISO color negative film and uh, but the, the interesting thing is as you can see it's a very small cartridge here to, to put it into perspective this is 120 film the whole cartridge is much smaller like even thickness wise I actually ah, I forgot to bring myself a 35 millimeter mm, oh well but basically micro four thirds in film so uh in fact uh inside right here you know there's like a quarter inch and a quarter an eighth an inch an eighth an inch quarter inch something like that on either side of this like uh you know tape from a that that's the film in there i don't know if you can see it it's just tiny so all right where to begin? Um, well, let's start with the, the cameras I've actually used with uh, taking pictures. Uh, let's see. Well, actually, let's start with something I haven't taken a picture with, and that is the Minolta 110 Zoom SLR. Now this little camera is interesting. Because you can you know, advance it there. And then you got a nice little Like that. So this camera, there's an on-off switch right here to stop using the little uh, batteries that you'd put in it, and um, your shutter button with a cable release if you would use it. The film counter over here is auto. X for X sync flash and then there's a bulb mode and you push this in and turn it like so and then uh, your aperture is set from f4.5 5.6 f8 f11 and f16 and then you focus with this ring right there this is a a small rubber hood that, that screws onto the front of it, like so. No, you've seen these guys before, usually on 50 millimeters. And so it's a great little camera. Has you know uh, flash sync. It's not TTL, but if you're using a just a normal size flash, it'll work pretty well. There we go. But uh, a very interesting camera. Oh, to uh, get in it, to change film, you push here. And it is one of those things where it is a bit of a chore to get it to open on this particular copy of it anyway. Um, Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting it's not a side open, it's a bottom flap open. So you twist open here and just kind of pull up. And then you load your 110 film in as such. And then close it up and you can see your 110 film right there. Oh. 
Okay. Unfortunately, this particular camera, and I actually bought two of these, uh, both came in dead. So I don't have any pictures from those, unfortunately. It's quite unfortunate. Here's another uh, image of it. And then the top, where you can see the aperture, the flash, hot shoe, the um, auto, and the X mode and bulb mode. And, well, one more, because I couldn't decide which of the pictures I liked better. Alright, so where are we at now? Well, now, we're looking at this little guy. And, unfortunately, I can't click him because, uh, well, he's got film in it. But, tiny, tiny little guy. This is a 24 millimeter lens. And this will give you basically a 50 millimeter field of view. Uh, then there's a slightly wider angle, 16 millimeter lens. And then a more telephoto, 50 millimeter lens. And as you can see, there's an auto winder that I put up already, bad on me and a flash uh i don't use the auto winder on it because you know this little thing is it, it works you know you're, you're just single stroking okay so how do you change lenses well you push in right here turn the lens like so pull it off and say you want to throw on the 50 which is kind of a big lens but it's it's actually a really nice piece of glass um, yeah, very nice. So you, uh, you find that little mark, there's a little red dot, you stick the two together like so, clicks, like that. I don't know if you guys heard the click. And then with this guy, a lot easier to focus. The other one's pretty much in focus all the time. Uh, yeah. That's about a little over two meters. So, this is a nice little systems camera. Uh, you know, this is a more or less a point and shoot. Um, you've got, obviously you need to understand basic exposure settings because you're, you're gonna have your aperture. Um, you won't have a shutter speed with it, but you will have, actually, you know what? There is a shutter speed. That on me. Oh no, no, that's a second. So there's two focus rings. There's a, a one meter to infinity ring and the macro, oh, I see what it is. It's a macro focusing ring. I don't have it on the. So this little guy, if you could find one that works, the Minolta um, has a macro mode on it. That's what that other focus ring was for. So this guy is a little systems camera, and I, I've enjoyed it. Halois enjoyed it. Um, we took it out with us when we first picked up the V850 here, and um, actually, 50 millimeter 2.8 to Nikon's 50 millimeter f1.4. Just a huge difference in size. Uh, Caleb. Pike has recently done a video about these guys. Um, I've owned mine for almost a year now and I just recently took it out though because we were so busy with other things. Um, he just uh, made a video where he's adapted these little lenses on micro four-third cameras. I don't have any so I, I don't have a way to test it. The only thing I could do is adapt them to a Nikon F and then use the 7200 with its uh, crop mode to crop in on the crop sensor to basically get micro four thirds. I might do it. We'll see. S if I can find an Icon F adapter for it. But as you might be hard because, you know, the Icon F film plane is uh, something like that. So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to work out. 
But on uh, little mirrorless micro four third systems, this guy works great. And you know, this is a little true SLR. There's a little mirror in there, and so um, you've got a threaded release. And then here is the flash. You just set the flash in on there like so, and you click it on. I've tried it. It works pretty good. Um, and you know you got this with the with the winder which is one of the reasons I, and I really I put it up oh but you know with the winder which is one of the reasons I bought the winder is that it, it kind of gives me a place to put well at least two more fingers if not three um, because basically I, I can get I can get purchased with one finger and then like this it's tiny so I, I've really enjoyed it. Um, we'll continue showing this particular camera because uh, I'm currently shooting some Lomography black and white. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, I think it's, it's called Orca. It's Lomography Orca black and white film. I forget who makes that. But I'll put this little thing up for now. Might leave the 50 on there for just a little bit. But you know, here, look at this. Three lenses and a flash easily fit in your the palm of your hand. Easily. Throw them in your pocket, no problem. You know, here's an 18, right? Uh, you know, that's kind of an equivalent of a 35 millimeter on a full frame camera. And, uh, you know, it gets a pretty good, you know, like for street photography, this guy with the, the little body here, they're just, it's just an awesome little combo. And then if you want real tiny, this little 24 is, you know, this, this little 24 is like half the size of the, the 18 millimeter. I actually think these are so cool. So I've, uh, I've taken pictures with those and let me, yeah, here we go. So what you see behind me right now is the actual kit. And that's why I took a picture of the kit. Then I put the box up, but you see at the bottom in the center in the bottom, right below the camera body, that is the auto winder. You just plug it on and then you get a couple places for a couple more fingers. So you really got a, a much better purchase on the actual camera. And then you see the little 110 film. I pulled this out, but I didn't, uh, uh, I pulled out the, the lenses too. I left that particular body, uh, doesn't work, but I left that body and the winder in there and I just forgot. I took out the lenses in this guy. There's a little camera bag in it. You have lens filters um, for macro type photography. And, and uh, there's one in there that was a uh, um, color filter. So if you're taking and using um, tungsten balanced film in, in daylight, it would screw on and allow you to take those pictures. Or I think there might even be another one in there that's the opposite for daylight and tungsten balance. Pretty good little kit. Uh, it's, it's way awesome. Here's a different view of it, um, kind of showing the box, you know, the Auto 110 box. It's really, it's really nice little presentation box. So let's go back a few pictures. All right, so now, and this is probably the singular most popular style of 110 film camera. And it's the Kodak uh, Star 110. They made a bunch of these style of cameras. You know, you basically put your film in right here. You just slide this over, drop your film in like so. So the little tab there goes in on the middle. Drop it down like that, pull it here, and then you, you know, wind it on. 
Uh, if you want to, it will work perfectly fine with just pressing the shutter button there, looking through the viewfinder over here, which comes out right there. And then if you want to use the flash, you turn that on. I don't have real film in there, so it's not going to wind on. That's all. That's too bad. I don't even know if I... Do I have batteries in it right now? No. No batteries in it. It wouldn't pop anyway. So, um... You know, it's a great little camera, and they're made by everybody. You know, you can get... Um... Minolta makes a version of... Obviously, Kodak makes a version. Uh, who else? Vivitar. Just everybody has a copy of this style. Um, some have flash, some don't. Some are slightly smaller because they, they, they basically get rid of the flash part. Um, but they take really decent pictures. They're point and shoot. You just snap a picture. You don't have to worry about focusing. It's fixed focus. It's just a great little camera. Uh, and you know we've enjoyed it i'll show you some here's another picture of it from the top you can see the on off button for the flash the flash ready light and the shutter button and that's it that's all there is to it okay so that's the kodak star um now let's take a look at this little guy uh, this is a holga and you Place your film in like so, and you close this guy back up, made in China, and then your viewfinder. Just kind of put it up to your eyeball, and it's close enough. And uh, the, uh, the picture is used with your thumb right here, and then you just put it up here, snap it with your thumb like so just push down and then you wind on with the wind lever up here and just tiny little point and shoot i mean you could just kind of like snap pictures it's they used to call them spy cameras back in the day this one we don't have any pictures to show you because this camera I just didn't get around to switching it out really. We'd used up that first, this roll of film. Oh, you know, I still have a bunch, bunch more like the Orca that's in there right now. All right, now this guy, so the Holga comes in a little, you know, Holga box, so to speak. And, uh, you know, the little camera with a little strap. It's a great, you know, they take good pictures they're not I mean 110 film is not high resolution you're not going to take this and take a picture that you're going to blow up to 8 by 10 or anything like that just don't do it you can print a pretty good size 4 by 6 3 and a half by 5 the smaller size pictures like uh, used to happen and then um, you know they're they're decent we'll, we'll go into pictures here in a minute so, this is the Tokyo Micro 110. I believe it's actually made in China, but let me take a look here. It's an older one. Oh, made in Japan. Look at that. So, this is another one of those spy cameras. Uh, what you do, and you flip the film upside down on this guy. You put it in upside down so that the uh that little tab right here comes in and connects with that gear right there like so and then you close the little latch in the back back here once that's closed now there's only two things i mean you pretty much take your picture and you take your picture by pressing that button right here I don't think I really took pictures of it, but you know, little button right there, and then you wind it on. So this is one-handed operation. 
and then snap a picture. Uh, I haven't taken pictures with this guy either. Just it's more curiosity than a serious camera for me. But this guy comes with this micro 110 coin box. You can put some coins in there. Just kind of fun. Unfortunately, the key ring uh, doesn't work on the old 110 film. Too bad. So this guy came, comes like so. And uh, just wind it on, snap your little picture when you have real film in it. So that's those. All right, so that's my little 110 film camera collection. So this first picture, um, I think they're slightly out of order, so I'll have to kind of show you based on the order they pop up with. This first picture uh, is the Pentax using the 24 millimeter lens. You know, the color, I will say, the color didn't come out so great. Now, I'm not certain. It's possible it's Lomography film. Sometimes people report that there's a, you know, like issue with contrast and color in those and even other film defects. Um, so that could be it. It also just could be that the scanner doesn't really do as good a job on 110 film as it does on others. Hard to say. Um, I'm going to have to... That guy is out of order. That guy, all right, so this... What I'm going to... Whoops. What I'm going to do... So... I wish I could have... I should have looked at it before I started the video. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, on the screen, we'll, we'll kind of go through the pictures that we took with the Pentax first. And like I said, all these pictures were taken with the little teeny 24 millimeter. Uh, like, here's a Nikon official LF1 rear cap. That's how small... You know, you've got your, uh, like, a 28A battery, you know, tiny little lens. You know, maybe here's a good one. Let's see, which one is this one? This is, <laughs> actually, it's a great comparison. Nikon, uh, pre-AI, 24 millimeter. Pentax, 24 millimeter. That's a great comparison. Close back up. All right, so next picture. Uh, this is taken again with the little Pentax at uh, Tempe Town Lake. That's where the previous picture was taken as well. Um, colors aren't aren't the best, um, but it's actually a perfectly good picture something that if you were taking them in the 70s and 80s when these cameras were hip you know uh, in particular this guy here everyone was walking around on their vacations with one of these they slipped in your pocket real easy they were comfortable their pictures were high enough quality to share with co-workers and family really good so this picture is uh, Tempe Town Lake again. Hello is with the uh, binocular, you know, like those pay binoculars. Um, this one came out a little better. The color's a little better. I think the resolution was a little bit better. But certainly printing it up to maybe five, this particular picture, five by seven, I think you'd be okay. This uh, duck, the duck was at Tempe Town Lake taken with this little guy that you know you've seen this th those those first three pictures um, you've seen the first 
three of the first four pictures, the, the little Fisher guys we didn't show uh, in our um, D850, but when we were taking those pictures is when we used this. Most of these pictures you've seen with the D850's imaging sensor. Uh, this one is unfortunate, it's me, uh, but as you can see, somehow the, the film has a, a really strong red shift when it's taking a picture of me. Um, I'm not sure why. I tried and posted, tried to figure a way to correct it. I couldn't do much, so I didn't try beyond that. Here you can see is Holoas. Um, at closer distances, the little 24 seems to have a little bit of a distortion. Her head kind of got, is larger than it really should be. Um, the colors are good, but not great on that Lomography 200 film. And obviously here's me again, and I just look horrible on this film. It, it, <laughs> it does no good for my complexion. Uh, Hello is slightly further back away from her. The, the image doesn't, uh, she actually, her, her images, her skin tone, whatever it was, turns out really nice. Um, and, and in this one, I was just a slightly further back, so the distortion doesn't show up quite as bad. Uh, okay, Tempe Town Lake. This was taken. This, I think, was the last picture I took with this guy. And that's just a tree with the railroad track and the, the um, and, and then the, the old railroad track and the new railroad track. So this one is pretty significantly out of order. The uh, fruit, I took this picture with the um, Kodak Star 110 and uh, there was something, you know, there was a little bit of a problem in development when I was uh, um, agitating the film. Somehow it came off the spindle and, and you see little film marks right here from like the while the 110 has, they're, they're fairly far apart, but it somehow, somehow did that. I don't know. But it, I didn't use a flash, so it's uh, seriously underexposed. Uh, here, this was taken at Trader Joe's. It's actually quite artistic. I, I like it from the artistic standpoint. This is taken at Trader Joe's. Um, some sunflowers and flowers. It was underexposed because, I, again, I didn't use the flash on the Kodak Star. But it's just, I, I like it, actually. It, 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 it's a very artistic image. Oh, yeah, this is the Kodak Star uh, with flash. And, and when it was at a closer distance to take, this was some Thai food we'd had. And, you know, I was showing actually partially... Um, the image is more on the right side than on the lower left side. You see the uh, damage to the film. That was from the development, the agitation. It, it just got kind of kinked in there. And, um, next time I'll, I'll uh, tighten the reel a little bit tighter. All right, now... Okay, so this is um, as this is the Kodak Star One Ten camera, and in this particular, it didn't really do it justice as much as some of the other pictures it took. Uh, it's basically a lattice that we have in our yard.
Don't worry. Uh, I'm gonna. I don't know exactly where the the camera cut at. Um, so, of the cameras, uh, the little toy cameras, whether you get the Holgo or the Tokyo Micro, they'll take great little, you know, soft but reasonably good pictures. Um, the Kodak Star is slightly sharper and in some cases better. In other cases it seems that it just somehow doesn't take as good a picture. Uh, the Minolta 110 zoom, it's a great little camera, but um, I'm going to say that you're probably going to have a hard time picking one up that is in working condition because I've bought two, both were bad. Uh, by far, the, so far my favorite of the 110s is the Pentax 110 Auto. It is a sweet little camera. You have, if you get the full kit, um, you've got the flash, the three lenses, you've got the 18, the 24, and the 50 millimeter. And um, the little power winder, which is, you know, it's a nice to have on there just for the extra grip support uh, I don't know how much I'll use it uh, because you know it, it adds enough support that I'd like it but then it adds bulk to the little kit because you know like I, like I showed you guys everything fits in your palm of your hand with no trouble if you throw it in a couple of pockets you're good um, you know you have a full camera kit so um, by far that is my favorite camera at the moment. Uh, I showed you the uh, Kodak and, and Pentax um, image samples. Mm. Oh, if you get one of these like the other one I have, if it's dead, it's not going to expose properly. It, it'll just really overexposed. It's, it doesn't have any sense of Sunny 16. Um, so test the film first, you know, before you take serious pictures with it. Uh, test the camera first. Little 110 film cartridge. Uh, so guys, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, my favorite Pentax 110 Auto, it, it, it just is a very enjoyable camera. And um, I, uh, I will see you in the next one. Take care. See you next time.